there's a lot to appreciate about AQR, but, um, and I'm not reading from my story that was in there, but the story that AQR published uh, was at a really important time for me and did a whole lot to make a lot of what I would publish later possible. And I think that that's something that gets missed a little bit um, in talking about literary reviews, especially ones that have been doing this for 40 years. Uh, I think AQR might have even been commended on the floor of the Senate or something like that. So it's not always um, just the quality of the magazine, which is great, but also what they make possible for writers like me uh, that is really great about AQR. So uh, I'm going to read... Um, most of a scene uh, from my new novel manuscript. And uh, there's not too much to say about it, except for that it takes place in the summer of 2003, um, when uh, these uh, four best friends have met up in Venice after not seeing each other for several years, and two of them have new partners. And uh, I think that'll be it. Okay. Why are we talking about the fucking Falklands, Marion said. We were, what, toddlers when that happened, right? Well, most of us, Kevin said, flicking his eyes to Bruno. What are we supposed to be talking about, Eloise said. Iraq, Henry said, I think. Bush, Blair, the occupation, trademark symbol. Can you imagine, Eloise said? What the hell's gonna happen next? I mean, we've gotta be leaving soon, right? What is that awful man word for it, pulling out? Sensing an opening, Nicholas straightened up and said, I don't think what we'll, I don't think we'll never leave. I think excuse me. I think we'll never leave. Might as well make it the 51st state. There's only one thing you ever have to ask yourself in a situation like this. Well, what's that, sweetie? Marion said, touching his forearm. Qui bono, Bruno said almost to himself, and Nicholas smiled. That's right, he said. That's exactly right. Can we talk about something else? Eloise said. I feel like this is what they want. What is? Marion said us standing around talking about it at a party, Eloise said. Who's they, Henry said. Are we at a party? Kevin laughed. The terrorists, he said to his wine and took a drink. Marion gave her brother a, hazy, a lazy, annoyed look. Bush, Cheney, she said, the rest of the bad news bears. Elle is right though, we should talk about something else. Now, Nick, Kevin said without energy, remind me what it is you do again. Nicholas smiled, shifted on his feet. The night went on like this. Henry watched as Kevin and Eloise took turns asking this Nicholas polite questions. He seemed just uneasy enough that Henry was sure his inclusion had been spur of the moment. Why not go on a free trip, he must have thought. Bruno, Marion said now, narrowing her eyes and letting her wine glass hover in front of her mouth. They'd moved into the living room and were sprawled or perched on various furniture like the crew in a heist movie. Someone put on an old record they found and what Henry only just now recognized as the Smiths drip, drifted through the house. Bruno, she rolled his name around. That's not a very common name anymore, is it? The cross-examination begins, Eloise said. Kevin looked away. Did you warn him, Henry? But Bruno smiled gamely. Well, I was just waiting my turn, he offered. It's kind of an older name, isn't it? Marion said, an older name for an older man. Henry watched her warily. She'd slipped into her drunkenness as if down a hill. How old are you again? Marion said. Bruno looked up at the ceiling. What is it, 37 now? I'm 37. And what wisdom do you have for us from your mid to late 30s? Eloise said, joining in. Take pity on us. Take pity on those still in the morass of their mid-twenties. That's a good word, Henry said to nobody. Hmm, Kevin said. Morass. Okay, Kevin said. Bruno leaned back into the pillows of the couch. Well, when Henry and I met, the last serious relationship I'd had was nine years long, he said. So actually, I don't know if there's much I can tell you. I haven't had a very normal experience by this age, I guess you could say. Nine years, Marion said, her voice dropping its tease. She sounded almost reverential. That's a long time to be with one person. It is and it isn't, Bruno said. Longer than most, shorter than the rest of your life. Can I ask, Marion said. Marion, Henry said. It's okay, Bruno said. What happened, she said. What do you mean? Weren't you still with whoever it was you were with for nine years? Well, I kind of got my heart curb stomped is what happened. We were basically married. That's how I thought of us anyway. 
Julian, not so much, it turned out in the end. Julian, Nicholas said, there's a name that never gets a break. Ah, yes, Julian, Henry thought. Bruno's great love before he'd met Henry, one of the most surprising things he'd ever told Henry, in Henry's opinion. Up to that exact point in time when they were comparing histories, Henry had been absolutely sure that Bruno's 20s had been spent wandering from man to man the way he did city to city. Bruno had been an extremely promising dancer. The companies had all agreed, but then had come the injury, which had taken Bruno almost two full years to recover from, not that he ever fully did. To this day, he still had to do daily exercises to keep his knee usable. This was, more or less, what Henry had assumed Bruno's approach to men was too. Henry's whole idea of Bruno had shifted that night, the way it was doing now for the rest of them. In the way of these things, Bruno had been most clear about the worst years there at the end. Julian had alternated between violent alcoholic attacks that were careful to leave Bruno with no visible bruises and desperate codependent begging. This was something Bruno could only see later, of course, with the support of his therapist in Al-Anon chapter. Once Henry had offhandedly referred to Julian in those years as suicidal, which had confused Bruno until Henry finally put his hands on the outsides of Bruno's wide muscled arms and looked him in the face and asked him who in their right mind would ever hit someone who could so easily break their neck. Though really Henry had been thinking, who could ever wanna hurt something so finely sculpted, so beautiful. It seemed disrespectful to life itself somehow. What did it, Eloise said suddenly. She blushed. I'm sorry, she said. I don't mean to be rude. I'm just always curious about these moments that force people to make a decision, how people know what the right thing to do is, I guess. Bruno gave her an amused look. Julian Lennon, Nicholas said, Julius Caesar. You want to know the truth, Bruno said? Always, Marion said. It's going to sound really, really cliche, maybe ridiculous too. Everything true does, Kevin said. He was standing at the window now, looking at the canal, the gentle bobbing of the tied up boats as the wake from some other canal echoed through the water. I used to have this dream, Bruno started. Wait, like a sleep dream or like a when I grow up dream, Marion said. Both, Bruno said. Anyway, it wasn't anything special. I used to dream of living in this ancient Italian villa outside Florence, and I'd see me and my husband waking up every morning and walking through the gardens together. That's really sweet, Nick said. But the wildest thing, Bruno said, or at least wildest for me, was that whenever I saw this, I also saw a little girl running along ahead of us, laughing, reddish curly hair, like mine when I was a kid. Like a random little girl, or, Marion said. Kevin snorted, Eloise rolled her eyes, but Bruno took it easily. Like my daughter, he said without annoyance. You know, the way sometimes you just know things in dreams. Do you, Henry said, clearing his throat a little, want kids in real life? Everyone paused and looked at him and Bruno sitting there. Henry thought what he imagined they thought, that this was both something he should probably already know and something he should definitely not be asking in front of others. Henry didn't know why he had asked, really, other than as a small punishment for Bruno giving the others this story that he'd apparently withheld from Henry himself. They'd talked about Julian Pliny, couldn't help but do so, such was the wreckage he'd left Bruno in. But this villa, this vision, this kid no less, none of that had ever come up. Bruno looked at him for a moment and Henry wondered if it was even true. You were explaining what happened at the end with this Julian, Marion prompted. Yes, this Julian, Bruno said. Well, I woke up one morning and realized for all the times I'd imagined or dreamed this, I'd never once looked over in that dream and seen Julian walking with me. Always someone else, someone faceless, but not him. And that's the day you ended things, Eloise said. I'm confused, Marion said. Who is it that did the curb stomping of the heart then? No, Bruno said to Eloise, but that's the day I should have ended things. I knew I was leaving without leaving after that. How long did you stay together after you knew that, Kevin said. He was looking at Bruno now, Henry could feel it. A very still, patient gaze it must be, Henry thought. About three years, Bruno said. Nicholas gave a low whistle. That's not a very good answer to your question though, Bruno said to Eloise. Let's see, a specific moment. 
well, there was this night we had a terrible fight and I stormed away from the house we were renting and walked down to the beach. This was in South Carolina, he said. And I get this call from him, sobbing, can barely breathe, begging me to come back. And I did. And there Julian is naked, lying on the kitchen floor, very dramatic, but also, you know, very dramatic. This was the man I loved, you know? It was fetal what he looked like, completely bare, vulnerable. I saw him there like that and thought to myself, I never want to make anyone feel like that again, even if I didn't love him anymore. So I got down on the floor with him and held him and told him I would never, ever leave him. And that's what did it in the end, I think. I wouldn't find out until much later, but the next week he started having an affair with some guy he met at the dog park. Now, the day I found out about that, I did come home and tell him it was over. I think he knew I'd really left sometime before that. I think he did what he had to in order to explode our relationship because he knew I never would. Anyway, it ended very quietly and I haven't seen him since. Everyone sat back. Seems like you've got enough wisdom, Jesus, Kevin said. Now, this episode Bruno had recounted to Henry. It was painful for Henry to hear then and now because everything in his body was overcome by the urge to leap back in time and protect Bruno, to hug him and lead him away from that awful house, the knee rehab he hated, the partner who desperately wanted company in his self-immolation. Bruno didn't tell them what happened two weeks later though, Henry noticed, which was that Julian drove him out of the house and into the front yard, threatening him with a giant kitchen knife, which one of the neighbors saw and called the cops over. Bruno hadn't let them arrest Julian and even wrote to the judge himself requesting that he sentence Julian only to community service. He'd told Henry all that and more, how Bruno had basically burned the one friendship he had there with a woman lawyer to get her to help him with it. How do you go forward from that though, Eloise said. How much later was it that you started seeing Henry? Bruno shrugged, about two years. I had to get away, so I took a position in a couple gigs in England and just didn't come back. Anyway, one day there was Henry, like a gift. Do you find it difficult, Marion said, to love him now? Kevin had been watching Marion as she spoke. Now he pursed his lips and looked away. Henry didn't look away though. Marion was sitting uncharacteristically still, not shrinking away from her aggression the way she usually did after delivering a particularly pithy comment, nor owning it with the false bravery of the person who wishes to take back what they'd said, but knows that it's impossible. Instead, she was cast in the calmness of deep rage, a rage Henry realized as he sat there that was directed at him. Well, do you, Eloise said to Marion. It was true his communication with Marion had dissipated over Henry's time in London, and he only now wondered if she'd felt like she'd been replaced, if all those emails with Eloise really had replaced the calls and emails with Marion, which had grown more and more infrequent. But that kind of catty resentment was so habituated in Marion that Henry didn't think it really had the power to do much but direct her idle ire. Bruno let out his breath heavily. You know what I'd say here from my mid to late thirties to someone like you guys? I think people your age do a lot of the things they do because they think being happy is about survival. When there's pain, you try to stop it. When there's passion, you try to not let yourself feel it too deeply because there might be pain later. You meet these people and you fall for them. And one by one, bit by bit, you give yourself up to them a little piece at a time. When you break up, you leave those bits behind so they can't hurt you anymore. But then you're 30, you're 35, 40, and you meet someone new and everything's going great. Maybe you get engaged, maybe you get married, or maybe you just date, whatever. But the whole time you feel something missing, something not quite right. And everyone thinks that's just what getting older means, feeling hollowed out like that. But really it's because you've given so much of yourself away, you don't have anything left to give to someone new. So what I'd say, I guess, is don't do that. Kevin laughed abruptly at this. Bruno put his hand on top of Henry's thigh, but turned to Eloise and Marion. Don't try to feel less or you will. Don't live that way if you can help it, Bruno said. That's what I'd say. 
you know, I'm glad I was with someone for nine years, even if it was awful in the end. It let me keep enough of myself afterward to fall so deeply in love with Henry, he said, and squeezed Henry's thigh. What a speech, Nicholas said. I'm 38, by the way, the village elder, apparently, not that anyone asked. And at this, it was Henry who laughed. Thank you.